Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Bettina and today we're going to babble about Heidi Lamar. So this is the next episode in my Women in History segment that I love on my channel. I just love highlighting certain women in history that I've learned about or read about and I just thought I'd bring that over to the internet because I feel like women in history have generally been underrated or undermentioned or completely forgotten as we see in this case. So let's get into it. So I've got my notes on one side and then I've got my cam my phone as my camera here next to me. So I'm trying not to go back and forth too much. So um, get Sorry. into it. So next time you're at asking for the Wi-Fi password at your local coffee shop or looking up the directions to that place you have never been before on maps or do your GPS, you have this beauty to thank. So Heidi Lamar was born as Hedwig Eva Kessler in 1914 to a well-off family in Vienna, Austria. And she was an only child, so she got lots of attention from her parents. Her father was a bank director and her mother was a concert pianist. So these two parents uh, allowed her to explore not just her mechanically inclined mind, but also her artistic one. Um, generally speaking, because she was a woman, they pushed her in one direction more than the other. Her father would discuss the inner workings of different machines with Hetty as a young child, like the printing press and the streetcars, while they would take long extended walks in the city. It was also said that at the age of five, she would disassemble her music box to see how it worked and then reassemble it. And, you know, this, these shenanigans would happen in between ballet and piano lessons, which she did take um, at a young age as well. Her brilliance was largely dismissed when she took to the stage at the age of 16 in a small film role. Uh, the film was called Money on the Street in 1930 that gained the attention of director Max Reinhardt, who took her to Berlin, um, I guess as like an intern or some sort of like acting program that he had. Um, but strangely, he didn't put her in any of his own films. Instead, she was cast in a controversial film called Ecstasy in 1932, um, and it really put her name on the map in the film industry. So, side note, this movie, Ecstasy, was super controversial because it was the first non-pornographic movie to portray sex and a female orgasm without showing any of the actors' faces. As I'd like to add here that what made the film specifically the orgasm scene so controversial was because the camera was focused right on her face but then also um, her string of pearls breaks and it cascades into the floor and it's kind of just like not showing the act itself but still a little controversial because of the subject matter or the context of the actual scene so it was very interesting um, I mistakenly said that they didn't show the actors' faces, which obviously was wrong. <laughs> Continuing. Mind you, 1930s Germany was all over the place. It was, you know, Babylon, basically, if you really want to think about it. And yeah, the movie was kind of out there for the time still. And even for her age, she was just uh, barely 18 at the time. The film was about an old man who takes a young bride and um, it's a loveless marriage. Uh, she goes back to her dad's house and asks for a divorce from the old man. She does not want to live there, live with him anymore. And um, one day she goes on her horse and uh, she decides to, to swim naked. And her horse runs off with her clothes. And a young engineer by the name of Adam uh, catches the horse and, and saves her or whatever. And um, they spark a romance. And... Um, some drama happens in between, but the point is she takes this guy as a lover. They plan this life together in Berlin as a new a new life, and the ex-husband, the old man, finds out and kills himself. And Adam didn't know that she had been married previous, so she he didn't understand why she was inconsolable. The Ava, the main character that um, Hetty plays, 
continues with the plan and takes Adam to the train station as if she was leaving with him to Berlin and starts a new life they had planned. But when Adam falls asleep at the train station, she she leaves him and lets him know that she's too she feels too guilty for the death of her ex-husband to start a new life with him. So that's basically the story of ecstasy and it was super controversial for the time. Um, but that didn't stop her from taking roles. It was it made her apprehensive to take on other roles. After that, she did do some stage acting and in one of the plays uh, called Sissy, she played the Empress Elizabeth of Austria and it gained she gained a stalker. Of course, a young girl <laughs> has to have a stalker. Um, and so Fitz Mendel was an Austrian military arms dealer and the third richest man in Austria. He he wanted to date her. He would show up at her job all the time and um, basically asked her to date him and marry him. And she said yes, despite her parents, both of Jewish descent, not approving of this guy. Why, you ask? Well, this guy was a total asshole. I'll put it this way. He had links to all of the fascists. He had links to Mussolini, Adolf Hitler, um, many members of the Nazi party in Austria and Germany. Um, mind you, he's an arms dealer, so he sells guns and weaponry to these, to these people. Um, but whatever. She's swayed by his charisma and marries him anyway, but it didn't last very long. Um, the man was an asshole, as I mentioned, and he was very controlling of her, didn't like that she spoke her mind, didn't want her wasting her breath on other things other than being the perfect wife and wanting her to play host to all of these dinners that he would have with these Nazi uh, people at coming to their house to have tea or something, right? And this becomes important later on in the story. So she leaves him and escapes to London in 1937. And luck was on her side because there she would meet Louis B. Mayer from MGM Studios. And he made her a famous Hollywood star. He took her back to LA and started giving her roles. And she was largely typecast as a glamorous, exotic seductress, uh, probably due to her accent. She was beautiful, so they would put her in these roles of just, just the beautiful seductress. And fun fact, Hetty was the original inspiration for Catwoman in the Batman comics. And Hathaway started uh, just dedicating some time to researching all of Hetty's uh, films to kind of see how she could mimic that in her, um, in her role in The Dark Knight Rises. So I thought that was a pretty cool tidbit. So um, Hetty found herself alongside Clark Gable in Comrade X and Lady of the Tropics with Robert Taylor and other very well-known actors of the time, just like Judy Garland and others. And um, her first color movie alongside Victor Mature was Samson and Delilah in 1949. So she had lots of roles, lots of movies in the works, but all these roles weren't challenging her enough. They weren't giving her a lot of lines. They relied heavily on her looks and she was getting bored. So to alleviate the boredom, she turned to back to the mechanics, back to inventing. And in this time, she was introduced to the pilot um, and aviation tycoon, uh, Howard Hughes. And Howard is super important in this story because he kind of gives her what she wanted he gives her the a bit like hey help me out i want to make these aircrafts faster what do you suggest and she's not uh trained classically trained she's not uh, she doesn't have degree, a degree in anything she was largely self-taught so what she did was she went and bought these books on fishes and birds and kind of just studied those to see how are they swimming and how are they flying fast? Like what shapes do they take? And she was able to redesign wings for the planes for Hughes. And what Hughes did, he turned around and sold those to the US military. So when I tell you she's a genius, she's a genius because before that time, airplanes were largely a very square models, um, kind of like, I'm gonna put a picture here so you can see what it looks like. And it makes sense, she wanted to mimic what natural animals do to fly and swim faster. But this spark 
right, of ingenuity, also stoked something of a fire that she didn't know was there, and it did not stop. So she created upgrades to traffic lights and proposed a tablet that dissolves in water to make Coca-Cola. Um, eventually, she wasn't happy with that one because it ended up tasting like Alka-Seltzer. Um, but this could have been the stepping stone to a product like SodaStreams that we know today, right? And that's kind of like all of her inventions. They, she wasn't very happy with them or they weren't taken up. And then later on, that was used as a stepping stone for something else. And this yeah. probably is especially sad for her because um, despite her mother being a converted Christian, all of their documents say Hebrew on both her father and her mother's side. And so she helped her mother escape Austria through Canada in 1938 when Austria was annexed by Germany. And her parental aunts unfortunately died in a concentration camps during the Holocaust. Uh, we still don't know how many other family members she may have lost at this time, which is a common problem for a lot of families because of problems with poor record keeping or just general chaos. In 1940, Lamar met with jo George Antheil, and, and, um, who was an American composer of the time, and they were chatting about how they were so bored in Hollywood. Hollywood was not challenging them enough. And they wanted to do something more than just sit around in lavish homes away from the wars. So George and Hetty collaborated in something that would be really helpful later on. And it's a new communication system that was used to guide torpedoes um, safely. And it involves frequency hopping. So like in a radio, you would just change channels multiple times. So what they would do is they would go, they would change channels multiple times so that the Germans couldn't see where the where the torpedoes were going to land um that's at least how i i was explained that i was finding how it was explained george and hetty patented this information in 1942 but the navy chose not to implement it in fact it wasn't implemented until an updated version was placed in 1962 during the cuban missile crisis and you know, not all was lost. They still wanted to do something to help in the war effort. So what they did instead was they used their celebrity status to sell war bonds, to join fundraisers, and just help in general. She wanted to help. She wanted to make a difference. Um, now, remember how she knew about Nazi wartime plans? Well, because she overheard it over the dinner table about some weaponry that the Nazis were thinking of buying and using, she also sold some of that information to the U.S. government about the weaponry. Many people like to use her relationship with Fitz as a way of dismissing her invention of the frequency hopping, claiming that she may have been inspired by something the Nazis were working on at the time that they were dining at her house, or just completely dismissing that she was even in the room during these conversations. There is some discrepancies, but it really irks me that people like to use her relationship with Fitz as a way of dismissing her genius. The man was controlling, abusive, and ultimately she had a dress as a maid to escape him. So, you make your own conclusions on that. In 1953, she became a U.S. citizen and continued in movies throughout. But there was a period of stagnation. Her husband, Howard Lee, built a villa a ski lodge in Aspen, and she slowly started kind of pulling herself out of the spotlight. Uh, her last movie was A Female Animal in 1958, and in 1960, she was honored in the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She wrote a book called Ecstasy and Me, where it was kind of partially autobiographical. She used a ghostwriter, and there was some drama with that as well. The ghost, she sued the ghostwriter for fictionalizing parts of her story, and um, someone else sued her because there seems to be issues with plagiarism. Um, it was just not a very smooth pub publishing, and she kind of wanted to retreat even further. In 1966, she also was arrested for shoplifting in L.A., and it's kind of like a cry for help in an attempt to return to the spotlight. But because of these unsuccessful projects, she decided to retreat from public life in Miami, Florida. In the 70s, up until her death, the only way she would communicate with the outside world was through telephone. Um, and she would, it was said that she would spend six to seven hours a day on the phone with family members, with friends, but she would never see them in person. 
And there was some theories online about what, what her headspace would have been. I mean, she was prioritized for being beautiful rather than her intelligence. So it makes sense that once she get, got a little older, she would feel like she wasn't very useful or she wasn't um, doing much of anything. And I can understand this because my grandma does the same thing. She's kind of just bitter about getting old. And I think Hattie at this point was also just bitter about getting old and wanted to retreat, um, not want to be in the public eye, not want to be around people because she wants to keep that image in, her he in their heads of her as young and beautiful still. I can understand that. Lamar's patent for frequency hopping expired and she was never actually paid for any of her inventions. And while she did get a lot of credits on film, her genius was largely sidelined. It was always just kind of just an, a side note in history. And it wasn't until 1997 when she was given a Pioneer Award by Electronic Frontier Foundation. Um, and she was the first woman to receive the Invention Conventions Bowlby Nass Spirit Achievement Award. Try saying that three times fast. She passed away in 2000. But her legacy still lives on. In 2014, she was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame. And her achievements as the mother of Wi-Fi and other wireless communications like GPS and Bluetooth, it's largely due to the frequency hopper technology that she invented. Um, there was a documentary written and produced by Alexander Dean and Suzanne Sarandon. Damn it, Janet. <laughs> in 2017, titled Bombshell, the Hedy Lamar story. And in 2019, an asteroid was named after her called uh, 32730 Lamar. Thank you so much. Are there any stories that you want me to cover? Um, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. can thank Haiti Lamar. No, that's not it. All called in the in font. Thank you so much, Hetty, and I hope your legacy is not sidelined ever again as we bring these stories to light.